okay, at least these two guys are tied at two with Kawhi, uh, and the player after them would be the fourth okay. best player. But yes, AD is that great. You got to start with this top five stuff. Okay, but wait a minute. If KD was healthy, is he better well, than KD? Well, let's just sit down. KD was the KD we saw in those finals. Then KD would be number two. I, I'm not afraid to say that. That's how great Kevin Durant is when he's healthy. Okay, so, so I think it's fair to say if he's tied with Kawhi, that puts him top three. If KD was healthy, that puts him, in the f- that puts him top course, yeah. four. So I think top five is fair. I mean, by the way, if Steph were healthy all season, is he better than Steph? Uh, yeah, because of the defensive impact that Anthony Davis has. has. You I, keep I agree. overlooking that part. I, I agree. I agree, although I think it's easier to build a uh, – team around Steph than around AD like when you look at AD he's had some talent around him in New Orleans and they were not a playoff powerhouse Steph when you put talent around him you became a playoff powerhouse immediately right your son Clay Thompson an all-star plus Draymond Green another all-star but no other MVPs and they're immediate they live in in the finals right even before KD got there so I, I, I think Steph and AD is an interesting point now are you going to back off and admit top five is a fair way to categorize it, or do you want I'm to I'm going to stick to my guns. We're talking about right now. Steph was hurt. KD was hurt, so they weren't around. Hopefully they'll be back at, to their usual self. But right now, as we speak today, he is top two. So you got to start saying that. Okay. I'm going to say what I say. You say <laughs> what you say. Michael Thompson. <laughs> the great Michael Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. You can see uh, at Champagne Nuts. Whoop. Okay, I'm How'd you come up with champagne that? Champagne and nuts. And nuts. It's an N in the middle there, like a apostrophe and champagne and nuts. Uh, Jeff Katz, you know Jeff Katz. He came up with that mm. Twitter nickname for me because he asked me, we couldn't come up with a, a, a name, and he asked me, well, what's your favorite snack? And I said, well, when I'm watching boxing and watching Max, I like to uh, munch on champagne and nuts. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's an interesting Twitter handle, mm-hmm. that's for sure. But what do you think about my bigger point, Michael? And, and I say top five because I'm including teams that didn't have LeBron and AD. Like, m- almost all of NBA history, the finals are dominated, meaning one, by almost always there's one MVP caliber player. Usually there's two. But when you have the best player in the world playing with another top five player, Kobe and Shaq, um, Bird and McHale, Kareem and Magic, Magic and Worthy, Jordan and Pippen, LeBron and Wade, LeBron now and AD, like Steph and KD. That team wins. Very rarely does a 72-73 Knicks team win or the Spurs with when Duncan was already faded and Kawhi won MVP with Parker and Ginobili win or, or an 4 Pistons team win. Very rare. And the Heat would have to do that sort of thing. Are they that kind of Yeah, the of Heat team? are, man. Heat are tough. The, they wouldn't be here unless they were legit. So you got to give them credit. You can't. You better not uh, look. Uh, take these guys lightly or else you're going to find yourself in a very long six or seven game tough series. So the Heat are here because of a reason, because of their, their culture, because of how hard they work, the, the type of uh, winners they have on that team, even though they only have one NBA champion in Iguodala. But uh, Pat Riley put together and Eric Spolster put together a team full of competitors and guys who understand how to play the game the right way and who buy into supporting each other and play together. So, yeah, if the Lakers are on top of their game, the Heat definitely could win this championship. Now, I don't want to attribute this to the wrong person. I think it was Stephen A. Smith, but it may have been someone else. I think it was Stephen A. who said on the air the other day that Pat Riley was going to retire, but when LeBron left, he's like, no, I want to beat LeBron. And now his team is in the finals with a chance to beat LeBron. Pat Riley, Michael Thompson, at a certain point, it looked like Phil Jackson had passed him as the alpha of the NBA, right, among non-players. He was the Don uh, Phil Jackson. He won, you know, 11 championships as a coach, Bulls and Lakers. Um, And he'd won as a player with the Knicks. Those are three biggest markets, more championships than anyone. But Pat Riley, as a player in the 70s, as a coach in the 80s and 90s, as a team president and, 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 and coach, and now as team president, in every decade, wins championships. Talk to me about Pat Riley versus LeBron James. Well, you're overlooking Jerry West. I mean, look, look at his resume. Don't forget about him, but... As far as where Riley is concerned, oh, yeah, knowing the competitor that Pat Riley is, oh, yeah, this would take – he would get a lot of satisfaction 
winning this championship against LeBron, beating LeBron and the Lakers, his former team. So, yeah, uh, knowing Riles, this would be maybe this might be his sweetest championship yet, even though he says beating the Celtics, nothing can compare to that. But I think if he can win this championship and beat LeBron and the Lakers, I think it's a uh, rank right up there with his beating the Celtics in the finals. Michael, you were the number one overall draft pick. Um, you went to Portland. You averaged 20 and 12. And then you get traded to, to the Lakers to back up Kareem, and you were, couldn't be happier about it. You know, most people would think, wait a minute, I'm the man, the centerpiece of the offense. I'm the number one overall draft pick. I'm not backing someone up. But you get traded to the Lakers to be a backup, and you were, it was like one of the greatest days of your life, and you wind up winning two championships, right? So you have real experience playing for Pat Riley. What is that like? I tell you, man. Yeah, I played in the league for eight years, and I played for a taskmaster and Jack Ramsey, a man who's very demanding. But when I joined the Lakers, it was a different level. Um, Pat Riley's the kind of guy who is not going to suffer fools, meaning you got to be a man. You got to be uh, responsible for your actions. Uh, you got to hold yourself accountable. You have to be ready. Basically, Max, you have to be a pro. You have to understand what it's like to be a professional, keep your body in shape. Um, have the right attitude, be all about the team. Pat Riley's not going to put up with anybody who comes in with a selfish attitude and who's not willing to work hard. If you're going to play for Pat Riley, you have to be a Magic Johnson, James Worthy, a Jimmy Butler, a Patrick Ewing type player. Especially if you're going to be the leader, you better be the kind of player that Jimmy Butler is. That's why he and Pat Riley are the perfect match. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.